If we are stuck indoors and feeling bored or blue, can we turn to video games to offer us any benefit? What impact do video games have on our mental health? Video games might be beneficial for many people, including the elderly. Tune in to find out the details, only here on the People Scientist Podcast. You are listening to The People Scientist, the podcast dedicated to helping us optimize our health with the latest scientific findings on neuroscience, physiology, and nutrition. I, your host, Dr. Stephanie Caligiuri, a nutritionist, physiologist, and neuroscientist, will be here with you every single week, bringing us information to ignite our thinking, to help us be one step closer to the healthiest we can be. Hello, my People Scientist Army, and welcome back to the People Scientist Podcast for episode 52. I hope you are all doing well and staying healthy. I debated a lot on what topic to do for today's episode. Originally, I was going to continue our vitamin mini series, but some of my listeners have asked me to do an update on COVID 19 since my episode on this a couple weeks back. But I personally feel like we are being bombarded with so much about COVID-19 that it is making some of, us, some of us feel anxious and stressed or tired of hearing about it. I mean, if you want updates, the WHO and CDC are good sources that you can turn to. But very briefly, my take on the situation is that what it comes down to, as I mentioned two weeks ago on my social media and in my podcast episode, episode 50, is that healthcare burden is a big determinant to patient care and patient outcomes. Meaning if a thousand people with the virus need care and the hospitals only have space and resources to care for 500 people, then the ability of the hospital to provide proper care is limited. So the reason why many events have been cancelled, classes are temporarily cancelled, people are working from home and travel has been reduced – That is all done with the goal in mind of reducing the number of people that are becoming infected so that the hospitals and resources can keep up with the number of cases. These preventive actions should not be scary to us. Prevention is smart. Prevention is smart because it is going to reduce the healthcare burden so that those who need the healthcare can get it, hopefully. I still have to come into work every day due to the nature of my work, but I know that many people have to self-quarantine or are working from home or just not going out as much. So for this reason, a lot of us, if not all of us, are going to be spending more time at home than usual. Some of us, especially if we live alone, may feel very isolated. So I thought for the next couple of weeks that I would cover topics on things that we can do at home that may benefit our mental health. Topics that are a little bit more light in nature as well in order to provide some different lighthearted stimulus to us. There are many productive things at home we can do right now, such as cleaning our home, filing our taxes online if we can, phoning family and friends we have been meaning to call and reach out to, and going after goals that we have been meaning to do for a long time. For example, many people have wanted to start a podcast of their own that I've heard about. And I encourage you to try it out because it's been a really rewarding experience for me. And if you need any advice, then feel free to reach out to me. I'd be very happy to give you some information to help you get started. But after several days of doing these tasks and reaching these goals, we may have completed those tasks and we need something more to keep ourselves busy. So today I will be covering a more fun topic on how video games may have benefit for our mental health. I will go into which types of video games may have the benefit. Perhaps while we are stuck at home, video games may provide us a medium by which we can connect to others, something to challenge our brain. Challenging ourselves is particularly important and, to be honest, is far more stimulating than us binge-watching Netflix or TV shows, which I know we will all do a little bit probably, myself included, but I wanted to give you another idea for a pastime right now and the neuroscience behind it and how it can impact our brain and our mood. 
So as we always do, let's start off with some core takeaways. Video games may be an option to help us keep connected and to benefit our mental health while being stuck at home. Playing video games has gotten a bad rap in past years as some speculate that video games may increase aggressive behavior or could lead to computer addiction or not taking care of life's life's responsibilities. Now, those are extreme cases, and there are extreme cases for almost everything in life. But many studies show that video games do not desensitize us to violence, does not enhance aggression, but in fact, playing certain types of video games can actually promote socializing with friends. It can stimulate the parts of our brain involved in strategy, decision-making, memory, and reward. Video games can activate our brain reward system and may preserve the activity of this brain region over time and can provide pleasure in our lives. Some studies show in older adults that video games may have benefit for cognition. In particular, video games that involve physical movement can also have a benefit for promoting exercise indoors. The types of video games that may promote cognition and mental health typically involve socializing, strategy, memorization, and or quick responding. Of course, as with everything, moderation is key. It is said that less than 10 hours of video game use per week is considered moderate use. So in today's episode, I will go into the effects of specific video games on our mental health, our neurobiology, and I'll also provide some examples of types of video games we can try during this time. Now, let's get into some details. A community of individuals that has been studied quite a bit in regard to video games is actually surprisingly the elderly, and in particular the elderly that live in long-term care homes in which they often have to stay indoors and may feel socially isolated. This is something that some of us may be feeling lately, of having to stay indoors and feeling isolated from others. Video games in this setting, in long-term care homes, have shown to provide benefit for the reasons of it encourages socializing. It can encourage physical activity, using our memory, and strategic thinking. Many clinical studies show that implementing video games, such as the Wii game console that has Wii Sports involving light physical activity, has shown benefit and resulted in better measures of well-being, increased socialization, and increased physical activity in the elderly living in a long-term care home. Stanmore in 2017 conducted a meta-analysis on whether or not video games can improve cognition. Now, cognition means memory decision-making, and learning, for example. Now, cognition is an important readout for the elderly at risk for dementia, but also cognition is important for everyone as a measure of intelligence and mental capacity. Now, the scientists in this meta-analysis included 17 randomized controlled trials with over 900 participants together. Overall, they concluded that video games improved measures of cognition in both healthy adults and in adults with cognitive impairment, such as in those with mild Alzheimer's disease. Now, an improvement in cognition means there were improvements in information processing, visuospatial learning, memory, strategic thinking, and decision-making. For example, one clinical trial recruited 79 older adults with the average age of 76 years. The game for the intervention group was played on a stationary bike, where they had to pedal on a stationary bike to outpace ghost racers around a virtual track. Now, the participants did this for 45 minutes three times a week for 12 weeks. The control group did regular stationary cycling for the same time. Now, those doing the exercise video game had better executive functioning, were 23% less likely to develop mild cognitive impairment during this time, and exhibited enhanced levels of a peptide in the brain called BDNF, which may indicate enhanced Neuroplasticity, which is a good thing, because neuroplasticity means flexibility and adaptation by our brain. Now, I think this was a great study because the control group was also physically active, and we know physical activity has great benefits for mental health and neuroplasticity as well. But it's really intriguing that when a video game was added on to the physical activity, that it seemed to enhance these benefits even further. Now, how about another clinical trial? Mayo in 2012 recruited 30 healthy individuals and had them do Wii Sports for 60 minutes twice a week for 12 weeks. 
the control group had no intervention. The scientists noted that after 12 weeks, the Wii sports players had improved significantly more than the control participants in measures of physical function and cognitive measures of executive control and processing speed. So they were able to process information much more quickly and efficiently after the 12-week intervention versus the control group, which is pretty remarkable. Jones in 2014 wrote a review on how there is evidence that moderate levels of video gameplay can have a positive influence on overall well-being. Importantly, the scientists defined moderate game playing as 6 to 10 hours a week, with excessive game playing being greater than 10 hours a week. So moderate video game play has been found to lead to improved mood, reduced emotional disturbance, improved emotion regulation, improved relaxation, stress reduction. Importantly, moderate play has been associated with better mental health and learning measures versus those that either play excessively or versus even those not playing video games at all, which I thought was surprising. There is a lack of a negative effect of video games for the majority of young players, and instead, video game play is associated with greater self-esteem regarding intelligence, computer skills, and mechanical ability. In regard to games where people play together as a team or versus one another, it is observed that these types of games can promote working as a team to achieve a common goal. It can also challenge communication skills and working together as a team, and and also can help to avoid social isolation. Hallbrook last year in the journal Perspectives on Psychological Science wrote a great review on the potential benefits of video gaming. They determined that overall, the effects of gaming on well-being depend on the motivation for gaming, outside variables in their life like what else is going on, and if there is social interaction and physical activity involved in the game. So for example, if games are played for enjoyment, then they are likely to have benefit on mental health. But if games are played because of achievement or obsession, then it can have a negative impact. The authors of this paper determined that we need to obtain our confidence and achievement through other facets of our life, such as work, school, or sports. If we have that foundation first, then video games may offer a beneficial hobby. I think the bad rap that video games gets tends to be due to a small proportion of individuals that play games compulsively. In the Journal of Behavioral Addictions in 2014, it was noted that spending time playing video games does not necessarily involve negative consequences, but that adolescents who experience problems related to video games are likely to also experience problems in other parts of their life. So in the scenario of someone having compulsive use of video games, this behavior is not necessarily specific to video games or a result of video games, but it just seems to be a behavior that transcends many aspects of their life. More specifically, Ferguson in 2015 aimed to determine if video game playing has a negative impact on adolescent behavior. They determined that overall, including results from 101 studies, that video game influences on increased aggression, reduced social behavior, reduced academic performance, depressive symptoms, and attention deficit symptoms are very minimal. So video game playing doesn't seem to overall impact these things very much. Some other studies have aimed to understand if video games are related to rates of depression. And I think overall, taking the data together, it has to do more with screen time or technology use, not video games specifically. Wang in 2019 pulled together 19 studies and concluded that screen time, being computer use, phone use, or watching TV, is related to us being sedentary and not physically active. We have realized that overuse of technology like our phones or social media use tends to be associated with a higher prevalence of depression or anxiety-like feelings. This can be for a lot of reasons, such as us being sedentary when we're using technology, watching stressful news reports that can increase anxiety-like feelings. Or some people may feel like they compare themselves negatively to others on social media, therefore reducing self-esteem and self-affect. So I think overall, taking screen time and technology use together, we have to keep in mind to balance our lives and add healthful components such as exercise and getting outdoors if we can. But in moderation, video games, especially for those having to remain indoors, Some use of video games may promote social interaction, decision-making, cognition, memory, strategic thinking, and mood. 
Now, speaking of mood, Lorenz in 2015 wrote about the role of our brain reward pathway in video gaming. Now, I've spoken about this circuit in our brain at length in episode 46, so if you want to go back and give that a listen, I encourage you to do so. But briefly as a recap, there is a connection of several regions in our brain, generally referred to as the brain reward pathway. This pathway is very important in our mental health, our feelings of motivation and pleasure, our ability to learn, and our ability to move our body. As a result, All of these things are very connected because they are controlled by the same brain pathway. Now, intriguingly, this pathway can also be involved in video game playing. The scientists in this study recruited 50 young, healthy individuals with the goal of determining how the brain reward pathway may change after starting to play video games. Now, the video game group was instructed to play Super Mario 64 DS for at least 30 minutes per day over a period of two months. The control group had no intervention. All participants had an fMRI scan of their brain during a rewarding task. Before starting the video game intervention, then the participants returned two months later to assess any differences versus baseline. Interestingly, the control group had a much lower brain reward response to the rewarding task at the two-month time point, whereas the video game group had the same brain reward recruitment as at baseline. So the control group had a brain reward deficit. The scientists concluded that video game use might keep the brain reward pathway flexible and active, which is a good thing. Now, Typically, deficits in brain reward activation, as seen in the control group, is viewed as a bad thing. And I spoke to this at great length in episode 46, as brain reward deficits tend to be associated with weight gain, physical inactivity, poor eating habits, and feelings of depression. So we want to keep our brain reward pathway active. And one way to do that that has been shown many times is through exercise. But this research suggests another way may be through playing video games. Now, obviously, physical activity has a lot of health benefits for us overall and would be a better choice over video games. So, of course, I encourage everyone to be physically active. However, after you have a good foundation of being physically active, if you are remaining or have to be stuck indoors, Video games may be a good pastime. Video games may also promote learning because of the innate rewarding and motivating nature of games. We have known for a very long time that learning can be enhanced when paired with something pleasurable and rewarding. So can video games enhance learning? Well, for example, in the journal Behavioral Brain Research in 2017, they did an fMRI scan of the brain during a probabilistic game. The scientist's goal was to determine the impact of regular video game playing on probability test performance and brain activity. So an fMRI is a functional magnetic resonance imaging. It can test, for example, the bold signal or brain blood flow or blood flow to a specific brain region. So this can be interpreted as the degree to which a brain region is recruited. So that's what an fMRI scan will assess. So the scientists selected people who regularly play video games versus those who don't, with an average age of 25 to 27 years old. Now, those that that were categorized as video gamers were characterized by playing more than 15 hours of video games like StarCraft or other action-based video games per week. Non-gamers with low or without any video game experience were defined by playing less than 4 hours per week. The participants were given a complex game where they had to associate certain symbols with probabilities. They were shown certain orders of symbols and had to predict the probability both based on their memory and their ability to predict the pattern. The scientists noted that video gamers performed about 12% better on this test versus the non-gamers. They noted using the fMRI that the left hippocampus had far greater recruitment during this probability task in video gamers versus non-video gamers. So this is seen as a potential explanation to their better performance as the hippocampus is involved in many functions including information processing and memory. So the video gamers had overall better learning performance during probabilistic tasks and had a better ability to categorize things quickly and were better able to learn on the spot, so to speak. And this could potentially be because of the involvement of a brain region, the hippocampus. So can playing video games enhance learning? Yeah, I do think it's possible. 
I remember when I was young, I played a game called Math Blast. Did anyone else play this game by chance? I don't know if it was too popular, but I remember playing it quite a bit when I was in elementary. And essentially, it was a game where you had to answer a math question. And if you answered it correctly, then you moved on to the next level. It was such a fun video game that I almost forgot I was doing math at the same time. So I certainly do think that playing video games can enhance learning because it makes learning innately more fun and motivating. Now lately, VR or virtual reality games have become increasingly more popular. And how do these affect our mood or learning? Well, there just isn't enough research on it, to be honest. There are a few clinical trials that use VR for physical rehabilitation for patients learning to walk after suffering from a stroke. For example, they'll put... VR goggles or VR helmet on them while they're walking on a treadmill. And the patients have to navigate around obstacles or increase their speed or increase their incline. And they have shown that virtual reality exercises like this can actually benefit rehabilitation versus just typical rehabilitation exercises. But what about recreational VR games? We don't really know the impact of them. I mean, anecdotally, From hearing from my friends and family, I've heard both good and bad things that the games that on purpose are made to particularly be anxiety inducing, such as those with a horror theme, and probably are not very beneficial for our mental health acutely, as it artificially mimics a very realistic scary scenario. But in contrast, a VR game that promotes strategy, quick thinking, and memory, that could possibly have benefit. So it is likely very dependent on the game itself, and we can't just generally say for all VR games what impact it would have. I've never actually played a VR game. Have any of you? I'd like to hear what your experience was like. So after all this information, you might be thinking, okay, Stephanie, what games are good for me to try right now while I am stuck at home? What if I don't have a game console? Well, I talked to some of my friends for some ideas. Now again, obviously, I'm not sponsored by these video games. You know I don't take any sponsorship at all on this podcast. Nor do I have any scientific evidence that these games are good. But from one friend to another, here are some examples that people shared with me. For example, if you have an iPhone, you can go to the App Store, select Game, and scroll down, and you can choose certain types of games, such as Strategy or Puzzle, which may in particular be more motivating or enhance our ability to learn. This is a good place to start. Some suggestions that I got from friends is on your phone or tablet, there are games such as Clash of Clans, Mario Kart Tour, or Words with Friends, in which you can play the game with your friends. Now, these games could promote social interaction because it involves working together or competing against each other and communicating based on that. On a computer, there are many games that involve interacting with others. For example, League of Legends is a popular strategy game that involves teamwork to reach a goal. On iPhone or tablet, some strategy games that involve quick thinking and probabilistic learning is, for example, Plants vs. Zombies, Bloons, spelled B-L-O-O-N-S, and Cooking Fever. These are all some examples of video games that my friends play that seem to fit some criteria of what could be a video game that may promote social behavior and learning. But again, these video games have not been tested specifically, but just some examples that my friends shared with me. I think it's really wonderful that with today's technology, it is quite amazing how games like this are so accessible, which makes learning and social interaction a lot easier. So that is a wrap, my people, scientist army. Overall, video games may have gotten a bad rap due to compulsive or excessive use. However, with moderate use, video games may offer some benefits such as enhanced learning, pleasure, social interaction, motivation, and reward. Video games involving physical activity may have even more benefit, particularly in those rehabilitating or in the elderly living in long-term care homes. Currently, for some of us that may be kept indoors and experiencing some social isolation, video games may be a good medium by which we can interact with our friends or family and partake in an enjoyable activity that stimulates our brain in a positive manner. Strategy games in particular may be of benefit. And I think it could be a good alternative to us watching TV, as video games may challenge us to think in ways that we haven't before. 
If you have any video game suggestions, I would love to hear about it. If you are stuck at home and wanting to start a group video game like Words with Friends or Mario Kart Tour or any other game, let me know and I would love to try it out and have a People Scientist Army video game group. I feel like right now, anywhere where we can have a sense of community is really important because having a sense of community is a fundamental to resilience. And I hope that I may be able to offer a sense of community to all of you, if possible, through this podcast community. So please feel free to reach out to me if you want to start a video game group, or you can just stay tuned to my social media on any updates in regard to a video game group. I hope that you all stay healthy and happy this week, and I will meet you back here the same time and same place next week on the People Scientist Podcast. Bye for now. I am a scientist simply sharing scientific evidence. Some of the clinical interventions I discuss are not appropriate for everyone. Before making any changes to your diet or lifestyle, please do consult the advice of your physician or dietitian. My opinions expressed here do not necessarily reflect those of Mount Sinai Hospital and its affiliates. Thank you.